welcome to the 15th Annual International Symposium for Personal and Commercial Space Flight. Good morning. I'm Pat Hines, co-founder and curator of ISPCS. Now that you've gotten here, and I know it's a hike to get here, because I have to leave here to go anywhere, you know, and it's always a deal. But relax. As you can see, we entertain you, we feed you, we water you, most importantly, we inform you and connect you. We take our work seriously in this business, but not each other. So no matter who you sit next to during ISPCS, it will be an interesting conversation, so go for it. Even if you're new to the industry, the assumption is that everybody here in this audience, the audience is a very important part of this conference. The assumption is everybody in this room is an expert in their own field, so it's, it's a swords down environment. There's not a lot of peacocking around here, except for me. There's, I have to make some exceptions, you know. I saw a great pair of shoes in here this morning, but we won't talk about shoes. As we take a deep dive into human spaceflight, spaceports, ground facilities, space policy, and uh, where'd General Monteith go? I just thought I saw him. And um, how we use technology to get us to and from space, conduct science in space, and yep, even go to the moon. You will see how the different segments throughout these two days connect to create what is called the commercial space industry. And hopefully, we will connect with your interests and your curiosity. We will discuss how the people in this room from government, industry, and academia continue to evolve and enable the amazing achievements of this industry in the last 15 years. This is the triumvirate, if you will informal coalition that created the space industry and continues to drive it to this day, bringing the leadership of all three of these segments into ISPCS and into a room together annually has been the purpose of this conference since we started in 2005. Why do we call this the commercial space industry? I get that question a lot. The definition of commercial space continues to evolve and expand as the industry dove, does. This evolution and expansion defines the industry. That's a short story. It doesn't limit, it. definitions can limit. We don't limit, we're expanding and evolving. We have to, in order to stay a viable industry. An example of this, and a key component of this expansion and evolution, is partnerships. The partnerships we make and keep, for example, the international, the 14 sovereign nations that are partners on the International Space Station, as well as others that work with us on the International Space Station. Humans have continuously lived and worked on the ISS for the last 19 years. I'm stretching that a little bit here. But anyway, most, more than half the people who have gone to space since we've been going, uh, since 1961, about 570 people have been to space, more than half, just about, more than half of those people have gone to ISS. So what we're doing, because we have a destination, it's now bringing more people into the space industry, repeat offenders there, if we want to say. But we're bringing more people into our industry all the time. And that's going to put a lot more burden on the FAA, so be nice to General Monteith when he gets up here in a minute. Because better transportation, better resupply 
to this destination helps us continue to build this nascent human space uh, transportation industry. NASA has recently created four interim directives, and they did it at the NASDAQ, which definitely got a lot of people's attention. But what does it really mean to commercialize the International Space Station? Well, for people who have technologies they're testing on a station, it means they keep their intellectual property, for example. If you want to send a commercial astronaut to the station, uh, and you have $52 million and $35,000 a day, have at it. But <laughs> that's what commercialization is doing. It is, and there are people who've already bought seats, and some of those launch providers are going to be talking in a couple of hours about this. This commercialization will further increase demand for this unique facility that rivals any single human construction achievement of mankind. Now, I'm not here s strictly selling ISS. What I'm s talking about here is the value of a destination. In the event that all of us wanted to live in a tent city, we could hang out under that tent and see how much fun that is. But we don't want to do that. Why do we need more humans in space? Whether suborbital or human uh, space transportation, the transportation assist system is essential to the industry's growth. As you can see, we're herd animals. Humans like to be with each other. Uh, and we definitely need each other in space. In order to do human things like breathe, eat, sleep, go back and forth, we need a wide array of accessible infrastructure. More humans equals more demand. More demand equals more supply. Not a zillion economists in the room. However, most of us get those equations. This is an equations and swords down environment around here. So we're trying as much as we can to keep as many people engaged in the work and the business of space as well as the value of science and technology to benefit humans. With technologies to help us grow this industry, the more we need the more we will demand. So you know our theme, go use it, we'll get you there. That's a little theme plug there. We live in a country governed by the rule of law. We work in an industry governed by the laws of physics. So space policy is a give and take in business. It's gravity, physics, not so much. So, there's always a balance and structures that we have to work with and try and understand in our industry. Space policy for space policy directive, the president has issued four policy directive. Space policy directive two regarding streamlining vehicle launch and re-entry rules is ongoing as we speak as well as communications rules are being revised as we speak, and we'll talk about those as well. Why are we talking about policy in an industry that's not solely strictly serving the government? The reason we're talking about policy is because the markets follow what happens in policy and regulation. We're showing over the next two days the interdependence of segments of the industry on each other and our economy. This is a capital intensive business. You've got to have money to be in the space business and more than the government's money. We're nascent, we're a new industry, so we still work together a lot. We know each other, as you can see. This is a community where we like to be together. So welcome, I'm very glad you're here. Talk to each other, walk around. Um, okay, so, not too many cows at your last space meeting, I'm sure. This was a new one for a few of you. So you can walk around. It's really calming to go uh, look at those animals out there. And they're not worried about nothing. They just give me that hay. And uh, what's, what else is for dinner? So 
There's still room on the Spaceport Tour in case anybody wants to go see Christy up in the front. Thank you, New Mexico Space Grant Consortium, the founding organization of ISPCS. Paolo, Joylin, Christy, and Cristina work with me all year long. We create this together, so thank you. And thank you to our speakers, our sponsors, our exhibitors, our audience members. Thank you to Lockheed Martin for sponsoring our opening and entertainment. Thank you to NMSU Arrowhead Center and the Chancellor's Office for uh, sponsoring our uh, speakers and sponsors reception and our opening reception. Ready? It's time for ISPCS.